Hey, what's up, everybody? Uh, I wanted to do something um, a little bit unusual today. This is actually based upon a, uh, a blog post that I made a little while ago. Um, so as you know, I make a lot of uh, content that uh, features Diamond Mine Baseball. I know that a lot of the stuff I've talked about has been a little bit more geared towards uh, card and dice games. I thought I would share the love around a little bit. Um, those of you, though, who've been around in the communities uh, for a little while might have noticed that uh, Diamond Mine Baseball, which was uh, once considered to be one of the uh, most popular games uh, for those who want to play on the computer, um, kind of uh, fell apart a little while ago. And uh, you might kind of wonder what happened. It hasn't quite been 20 years yet but it's been close. Um, so the story behind this is that Diamond Mine Baseball, um, which was originally a DOS game, uh, was uh, ported finally over to the uh, Windows uh, platform with version 8, which I think came up out in uh, 1998. Um, the earlier versions uh, were known as uh, Diamond Mine Baseball for the 1996 and 97 versions, which I think was uh, version 6 and 7, if this uh, page I'm looking at is correct. And then Pursue the Pennant is what the game was known as before, then going back to the first version, which um, allegedly was released in 1987. I don't have copies of these old uh, DOS versions of the game. If you do and um, you would not mind uh, helping me get a copy of them with the season disc, I would forever be grateful. I would would love to have that um, and um, I would uh, repay you not just potentially financially for it but also by um, eventually doing a replay with an old version of this game because I think it'd be a lot of fun to sit around and mess with that. Um, the game was called Pursue the Pennant, but it wasn't actually based upon the Pursue the Pennant engine. Um, there's a, a good uh, uh, interview with Tom Tippett that uh, Derek Bain um, went through on his baseball analytics website, which I'm actually looking at right now, um, which talks a lot about what went on in Tom Tippett's mind when he created this game. Similar to the board game of Pursue the Pennant, Diamond Mine Baseball was actually based upon Stratomatic, but it was um, supposed to like take the Stratomatic idea and expand it, right? Um, and that's kind of where the game comes from. And it's obvious um, if you've played with um, uh, Diamond Mine Baseball, right? If you've if you've gone in and you've really sort of studied, you know, the way that the game works, or if you've noticed oddities like guys who had zero home runs in real life hitting home runs in the game, and so on. A big part of the reason for that, as I understand it, is because there are so-called event tables, which end up being sort of like player cards for the uh, players, and all of the events that are possible in baseball are technically possible there, but some things are more possible with certain players than others, and um, there is sort of a uh, pitcher-batter system, but it's not 50-50. It depends upon a bunch of different calculations and, and things like that. It's, it's a bit more complicated, but the general idea is kind of of the same. This is also one of the reasons why when you look at the air ratings and the fielding ratings for Diamond Mind or for Pursue the Pennant, you'll see that they use the same scale that Stratomatic uses, which is interesting. Um, <clears throat> very interesting to uh, see how that works. The question here, though, is not necessarily like exactly, you know, what it is that um, uh, Diamond Mind uh, Baseball does and how it does it well or how it does it poorly. We can talk about that later. Instead, we want to talk about kind of what happened to it and what happened to the death of this game. And so this comes around probably 2006 or so. So Tom Tippett is the name of the man who created Diamond Mind Baseball. He was very well known and very well respected in the um, uh, in the uh, sabermetric scene way back in like going back to the late 90s, I would say. Tippett um, in uh, 2006, 2005 to 2006 was looking to sell Diamond Mine Baseball. When you look backwards, you can see that after the game was ported to Windows that um, he kind of had a little bit of a lag in productivity, right? I mean, you're looking at 96 had one version of the game, 97 had another version of the game, 98 had the first Windows version. The next Windows version, version 9, I believe, comes out in 2001, and then there's like nothing. And then you're thinking, well, there are some problems with this. People on the forums were complaining about this and that, and it became, I think, pretty clear that Tippett was looking to go elsewhere for challenges and that he wasn't so interested in co continuing to um, uh, invest time in the source code that he originally wrote in the uh, mid-1980s for this game. And so what happened is he sold the game. Who did he sell the game to? He sold the game to a guy named uh, Dane Myers. Dane Myers um, ran a company called Simnasium. Um, now, none of us on the Diamond Mine Baseball forums, and I say us because I was part of it at the time, um, none of us had ever heard of Simnasium. Simnasium was a online-only version of Diamond Mine Baseball that worked um, similar to sort of fantasy baseball. It works the same way that Strat 365 works. If you watched Uncle Ron's video the other day, 
Um, it works uh, similarly to how um, OTP's um, perfect, uh, what's it called, perfect game or whatever, perfect team, whatever it's called mode works, the online only mode. The way that it works basically is you um, are playing in like a league with a bunch of other players. And so you have control as a general manager would over the uh, players that are on your team and you have control over the lineups and certain instructions. But other than that, the computer plays the game all the way through. I don't know why people would want to do this. I consider that to be the most boring way to play the game. But for some people, I guess this is attractive for some weird reason. Anyway, Tom Tip or uh, Tom Tip had sold the game to this person named Dane Myers, who ran the Simnasium company. And uh, at the very beginning, the uh, Tom Tippett had this announcement in the newsletter that says, oh, everything's going to be fine. We're going to go ahead and work together with them. I'm going to stay with Diamond Mine for a while, and we're going to push out a patch for version 9 that's been in the works that addresses all of your concerns. Then the patch didn't come out and didn't come out and didn't come out and didn't come out. And unfortunately for us, um, the posts about this from 2006, 2007, and 2008 that were on the main forums went away, right? And they went away because Dane Myers became very upset at the things people were saying about him and ended up completely nuking the forums. Um, I remember those days very, very well. If you go onto the Delphi forums, you can find little bits and pieces of stuff, but you can't find really the good stuff. The good stuff's all gone. The Internet Archive doesn't have it. There was a while when a guy named... Uh, um, what was his name? Uh, Secondary Black Belt is what his handle was. I won't say his real name. I do know what it is. Um, he had at one point in time a website, um, a page on his personal website that was devoted to just like the um, all of the drama, all of the broken promises and all this other stuff that the uh, game went through. It's um, unfortunately no longer um, accessible. As I said, even through uh, the Internet Archive, you can't find it. Um, what came out on the forums during this time is that Dane Myers was hoping that everybody would move over to Simnasium. And there's obvious reasons why, you know, it's, it's pretty obvious because with the Diamond Mine PC game, you would sell the game for, I don't know, like 40 bucks or whatever. And maybe you would sell the seasons and you're really making money off the seasons. The same way that Appa and Strat today really make money on the seasons, not on the game. Sort of like what happens with uh, Nintendo, Sony, um, and so on and so forth. They'll make their money on the seasons and on the upgrades that they make, but not necessarily on the base system itself or on the base you know they make their money from the games not from the hardware um anyway um dane myers wanted to push that over to a subscription system where you have to pay a certain amount of money to play in a um, online only league with other people now if you've played these games like i have you played replays and stuff you know that online only just doesn't quite cut it especially if you're not actually playing the game i mean i have no interest in a game like this ever i never will i never have right the idea that people would want to like play that sort of game and put away the pc game where they can do anything they want is absolutely laughable it's really bad business right that's the truth behind this um, and uh, that's what caused a big rift in the end many of the regulars were banned from the original diamond mine baseball forum i start sort of lost track of all this sometime around 2008 when uh, my wife and i went back to china for about a year or so um, i didn't have quite the same amount of time to follow this i actually feel bad about it because i spent all sorts of time and back then on the forums yelling at people and not actually playing the games. And when I look at that in hindsight, I think I should have just stayed away from the forums and played the games. It would have been fine. We were convinced for a while that the company was going to go under. And in fact, I think that was actually Dane Meyer's strategy for a period of time. Um, but it didn't happen. We did eventually get the version 9C, though it was a couple of years behind schedule. Diamond Mind is now up to version 12. The game still exists, though. Honestly, the differences in versions are not that huge. We'll talk about that later. Really, the current version of Diamond Mind Baseball is not significantly different from the old DOS game, which is something that's interesting. Again, if you have a copy of that, let me know. I would love to play around with it. But uh, from what I've seen on the demo, you can play on the Internet Archive of uh, version four, Pursue the Pennant, it's the same game and it's obviously the same game. And a lot of the modules look exactly the same. Very, very interesting. But that's the history of what happened. That's the reason why Diamond Mine Baseball fell apart. A lot of the people in the sabermetric scene who had a lot of uh, respect for this game lost it because of all of the ridiculousness that was happening with the ownership of the company. Um, a lot of people, I think, became upset with Tom Tippett for um, abandoning this game that he'd worked on for so long after making promises that we were going to have this, that, and the other come up. I know at some point in time, Tom's going to come on. And Tom, if you're watching this, I hope you're doing well. He'll come on and he'll talk about you know different priorities and different stuff like that. And there may be a different part of the inside part of the story. As far as the fans of the game are concerned, though, it was a complete abandonment of the game uh, by the game company itself. 
And there were some really interesting things that started happening around that time um, that uh, did a lot of financial damage to the uh, game company, a lot of which it hasn't really recovered from since. Now, I still consider Diamond Mine Baseball to be a great game. I think that it is up there with the best of the pitch-by-pitch -pitch, you know, focused computer simulations. As you may know from my earlier videos, I don't quite hold OTP in the high, re high regard that um, a lot of other people do. Um, and I also have some concerns with Action PC Baseball, given how I've played with it. We will play these games in the future, and you can judge for yourself once we get there. Um, but uh, having said all that, there is a problem with Diamond Mine Baseball in, in the sense of uh, that people had that the game company basically abandoned them completely. That's of big concern, and that's what did the damage and what did the big blow. Today, there are two Diamond Mine Baseball forums. There's the official forum, which is like a wasteland. Nobody's there. And then there's the fan forum, which for a while was a happening place, but that was maybe a decade ago. Nowadays, there are very few people there. Um, it's There's not a lot happening. Back in the old days, we used to have people who would do um, serious experimentation with Diamond Mine Baseball and who would look into, you know, doing, um, hun you know, uh, uh, clusters of 100 seasons or whatever to make sure that they got rid of as much random number generator randomness and all this stuff as possible. Not stuff that today I really agree that much with, but uh, stuff to keep in mind. Um, things were different back then. It was a different game, and it was uh, definitely a different uh, crowd and a different group of people that played it. And I miss those days, and I miss some of those guys because uh, some of them were uh, very, very interesting. There you have it. That's kind of the death of Diamond Mine Baseball. It's uh, still around. Um, it's still a game that exists. They still come out with seasons, which is a very, very good thing. I'm very happy for that. I'd recommend supporting the company and supporting the game. But um, I am afraid that uh, Dane Myers, who we used to call he who shall not be named, um, has done so much damage to the company and to its image that um, it probably will never be able to uh, fully, uh, uh, fully recover. That's it for me today. I'll talk with you tomorrow. Bye.